Hi everyone for tonight's nightcap and review. I'm having a soda and I'll be reviewing Conspirator's Kingdom. This is the, uh, by Elise Thompson or Thomason. Uh, this is the second in the series of the Mages of Oblivion. You do have to read the first one in order to read the second book. Um, there might be some stuff in this uh, review that might be spoilers for the first book. So if you're interested in reading the first book, go check out my review on this one. You might want to skip this one for right now so that you don't get any spoilers. Um, at least only little ones um, at the start. Uh, so these are the tropes and these are the content warnings. Right off the bat, I'm giving this book five stars. I enjoyed the first one, but this one I enjoyed uh, just as much, if not more than the first one. And in different ways, which was really fun to read. So what's this book about? Uh, well, first it's about Tunisia, I think is how you pronounce it, whose family was one of the traitor families from book one. In fact, her family was basically the ringleader of it. Um, her family is now considered traitors, even though her father and brother, who were the prominent ones, were unalived by the emperor and the empress, who is her half-sister. Um, her and her sisters and one of her other brother or her remaining brother have basically been spared. They have been deemed as not having part in it or at least not a willing part in the conspiracy. So they have lost just their titles for the most part, their lands. Um, just basically they were at the top ech echelon of the social hierarchy and now they're at the bottom without being basically peasants. So, um, but that's not working for Tunis Tunisia. Um, she was actually very much in uh, the thick of it with her father to plot and plan to overthrow the emperor. So, uh, but she is doing everything she can to keep that on the down low and do everything she can to basically claw, claw her family back up in status and in some way get her family on the throne. So she's still wheeling, dealing, plotting. Um, she is using her status as a half sibling or a half sister to the empress to try and get some of that status back. The Empress throws her a bone and makes her an ambassador, um, uh, uh, trying to think of it. an ambassador, we'll go with ambassador, um, a diplomat, that's the word I was thinking, a diplomat to foreign dignitaries. Uh, the first one didn't go so well uh, uh, with some witches, um, but the second group is a group of fae who come from a far off kingdom called Matt, I think, M-A-A-T, I think is how it was spelled in the book. Uh, the thing is, the two kingdoms don't interact much because the Fae consider the uh, Mage Kingdom basically cursed the whole land. So they want nothing to do with them. But there's a reason why this Fae Prince has come to this land. So the reason that this Prince, uh, Meruka, I think is how you pronounce it, has been sent to this land is basically in his family. It is very much, um, I forget, uh, I'm not familiar with the show, but like where basically is everyone trying to unalive everyone else to get on the throne. Um, everyone is very much political and trying to get their butt on that golden throne. So um, Prince Maruka is definitely working behind the scenes to unseat his brother by any means necessary. But his brother knows what he's trying to do. It's very much that they know what each other one is doing. Um, two snakes in a basket, as it were. Uh, so the king has sent Prince Maruka to the cursed kingdom, telling him he cannot come back until he has, he's married. Thing is, mages and fae, apparently the magics don't mix, but it turns out Tunisia, who is the diplomat who welcomes him, is one of the few fae who doesn't make him feel sick. Uh, he actually makes a deal with her to help him find a bride, but really he is plotting because he can see how devious she is and sneaky and plotty like <laughs> that's probably not a word um and he's like I think this woman is my best chance to at least have someone by my side who's gonna help me or at least not hinder me as I try to get on the throne so he starts wheeling and dealing and doing what he can to in the kingdom to establish trade routes uh between the two kingdoms but also convince her to marry him or at least trick her because the fae are tricky uh, so that he can leave the kingdom uh, and go back home and continue on with his plots. So this was a great book if you like political intrigue, but it's not super dense, heavy political intrigue. It was definitely banter, and a lot of light tones, but there is a lot of plotting in this book. I will also say something I don't know if I would say I struggled with, but I found it at the beginning of the book. It was like very conflicted as I was rooting 
not rooting, but as I was reading uh, Tunisia's story, it's like, I know she's the villain or villainess, especially from book one. She tried to unalive a character and story, uh, people in the story from the first book that I loved. Why am I liking her? Why am I liking her story? Should I be liking her? I feel like I'm betraying the other characters that I fell in love with in the first book. But as you read her story, you get so much depth for her about the, uh, about who she is as a person. You don't necessarily agree with her motives, but you agree with her as a person and the belief she has in terms of like, she is very much ride or die for anyone she considers hers. It, even if they're not in her family, if it, she considers you hers, she will do what she can to protect you and keep you safe. So you just see that and it's like, just, it's like, I get she's a villainess, but she's not all bad. So these are very much morally great people. Um, and Prince Maruka, I mean, you see the schemes he does, but he's just such a character that you're like, I get he's not great, but he's making me laugh. And I love how he's treating, um, Tunisia. He was just such a sweetheart to her. Like a lot of us, you, uh, as you read, you just hear the things or read the things that he is talking about when it comes to her and has feelings about her that it just makes him a, such a sweetheart. And in some ways, I think she's the more devious of the two. And she, he's just basically actually kind of in some places supporting her to get his bid on the throne. So it was very much a power team, power couple, and it worked. Now, I will say this is a slow burn. There's not a lot of spice, but there's a lot of tension and it was just so well done. I enjoyed the plot. It was uh, a great plot to read. I loved he reading the author's descriptions of this foreign land, which was based on ancient Egypt. It just sounded so beautiful. The world building in this book is just enough to understand the story, understand the world. You will understand it better if you read book one, because she doesn't go in as much depth for this one. She basically is just building the new kingdom in terms of world building not the whole world like we did on the first one so you do carry over some of that knowledge but it just sounded beautiful it definitely sounded how i would think ancient egypt uh would be if you threw fate into it so i enjoyed this book it's five stars it will be available january or no not january i'm sorry we're in january february 6th i really do recommend it especially if you like fantasy with i would say a medium scale of world building nothing too heavy and just great banter and dialogue between the characters I really loved how she uh, writes her characters they're just so well done so I hope everyone has a good night and happy readings